Hi everyone, welcome to the LinCam TV show. I'm your host, Cassie Vitali, and today is a very special um, edition of the show. We are speaking with the founding members who are family of um, Haley Blowers, and they have started the Haley's Hope Foundation. Um, today with me is Rainy, who is uh, Haley's mom, and her aunt, Leslie, her aunt, Kristen, and her wonderful grandmother, um, Tally. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. I know that um, I introduced you as Rainy and you're in Lynn and that you were telling me people <laughs> in Lynn know you as Missy? As Missy, yes. Okay. That was my nickname growing up. My real name is Lorraine. And as a baby, Leslie nicknamed me Miss Lorraine. So it got shortened to Missy. To Missy, okay. So it is her if you're at home and you're like, I know her, <laughs> but wait a minute. She just yeah. said, yeah. Uh, no, that is good for people to know. I appreciate you all being here. I know I mentioned the name of the foundation. I did not mention what the foundation um, was started for. I mentioned Haley. But if you um, want to talk a little bit about how the foundation started, because of course, um, okay. you know, Haley. Well, it was in memory of Haley, who had died by suicide April of 2011. And as I was seeing her friends struggle with the grief and the loss of the, and their own suicidal thoughts, I needed to help them and figured out what to do. And then talking with my sisters, they had thoughts to themselves about helping others. So we came up with Haley's Hope Foundation. I'm really sorry for your loss. I know Thank I've you. met you um, about a year ago, and uh, I was very moved by all accounts. Um, hearing about Haley and um, seeing the support for the foundation from all the people that love her and all the people that are affected by this epidemic, if you will, because a lot of teenagers from everything I've read and from the things you teach um, are struggling out there. Uh, can you talk a little bit about some of the things that you um, have started to do as far as the educating uh, people and speaking about teen suicide? Um, I don't know if I should okay, say well, if you want Well, to we say. have had opportunities to speak at, at Pickering Junior High and other community events, our business women's organizations, and our fundraisers, any of the fundraisers, I also will speak about the suicide awareness and we'll give people general statistics. We will speak about risk factors and signs and what to look for in teens. We focus on teens, but we would never turn away from anyone. Teens are the unheard demographic because they're so full of drama. A lot of adults won't listen to what they're trying to say. And I unfortunately did the same to Haley. I didn't listen to what she was saying. I didn't know. I wasn't aware. I wasn't educated. So that's what we're trying to do, and we'll put that out. And we did speak to the parents at Pickering Junior High also. We had a, a, a the night before we spoke to the students, we had an open house for any parents interested. Wow, that's great because I feel like that's such a big part is the communication. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I want to say, you know, you were mentioning that the listening part, but I think also for parents, if they've lost um, a child, I think people around uh, the person who commits suicide probably feel a sense of guilt, and I feel like that yes. it's important that they realize that it is not their fault. It's not, it's not a matter of someone's fault. It's a variety of things that unfortunately come together, and you're trying to help people to know how to avoid right. being in that same situation. It is always the person's choice. They make the final decision. There's a lot of factors around it. There may be a trigger that is attributed to a particular action, but it's never that trigger's fault. It's, it's never, Leslie has used this example and I, I, I take it from her, so I'll give her credit. It's never one drop that fills the cup. Okay. But it is one drop that'll make it spill. I think one of the things too, I know Leslie had mentioned to me um, another analogy, if you will, is about the um, what's going on at the foundation. Can you talk a little bit about what you mean with that? Yeah, recently we had the opportunity to speak somewhere um, at a very large event and um, somebody was having a really hard time comprehending the, um, the reasons behind why somebody would want to do this, especially a young person. And they were convinced that it was simply bullying and I was trying to relay, you know, all, there are always all sorts of different factors. No, 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 it's always bullying. So the best analogy I could come up with was 
oftentimes, as we're learning, and we're continually learning, but one of the things that we found is that um, depression or low self-esteem is often the foundation, just like in a house. So that's what holds up everything else. And um, then you've got that foundation, which is sturdy, doesn't go away. And then you start building all these different things on top of that, which add to um, the building of the house, if you will. And then the last thing that goes on is the roof. And that is the first thing that people see when they do look at a building. They don't often see the what lower levels or the foundation of it, but they do see the roof. And so the same thing, you know, you've got depression and then you've got uh, low self-esteem built on top of that and then you've got home issues built on top of that and social pressures on top of that and then finally you've got bullying say um, and that's what they see mm -hmm. yeah. and when we talk about remembering in this case specifically Haley the things that I hear about her that she um, had a warmth that she was extremely compassionate that she would um, try to brighten someone's day. Mm -hmm. Those aren't things that make you think that somebody would hurt themselves when you see that in a person. You think, wow, this person's so full of life. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean, of course, that there aren't things underneath that they struggle with. Um, can you talk a little bit about how um, you might not be able to see something on the surface, um, but what would you look for? to try to see what might be going on with that person. Like, so mm -hmm. some of the things people should know to look for. It's more their actions. And a lot of the signs of suicide mirror drug abuse. So you have to really know the person you're talking about. Parents, and especially the friends, the peers, know best. They, they can see the differences. Uh, activities that they once loved or couldn't wait to do, suddenly no interest, change of of friends, change of appearance, especially with teenage girls because they, they're they struggling to find themselves and then suddenly not caring about if they comb their hair right or put their makeup on. That's something to start looking. And just because they do this doesn't mean that they're suicidal, but it could be something else. And a lot of people who die by suicide actually have that outside texture. They hide it. They feel they're alone and they feel they're not worth helping. So they, they hide it to, to try and do it. And I, I attribute a lot of what Haley did to living vicariously, that if she made everybody else around her happy, then she could be happy. But as you know, that doesn't work. Right. It, it, you need to fill your own void, not everybody else's. And she just kept trying and trying the stories I've heard of what she'd do to help other people. It's it's astonishing. It's like, really? <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's a beautiful tribute to her that she, if she was struggling with things, which you know she was, that uh, she had the desire to try to perhaps knowing what her struggles were, help other people to not have those same yes. struggles. Mm -hmm. But yes, it doesn't take away your own struggle. Um, I know, um, Kristen, I haven't had you talk yet and I know you do a lot of the outreach with like with Facebook and with the um, having an opportunity for young people to to talk you know about what's going on uh, you know what are some of the things that you would first want people to to know um, well one thing that I, I like I saw this quote before was the girl that's always there for somebody also needs somebody there for her and that was Haley when I saw that um, I, I started crying because that's, that was her. She was always there for somebody else. And talking with some of the other teens that um, are strong in trying to help everybody else, I'm learning now to ask them, how are you today? Mm -hmm. Because this is a lot for them to handle. To teen suicide, that's, that's a tough t subject. Mm -hmm. And so um, I know it's tough for myself. And I'm, you know, I'm older. And it, you know, so... I make sure I ask them, how are you handling it? Because no one seems to turn around and ask them that. Um, on Facebook, I do keep in touch with a lot of Haley's friends, but then there are a lot more other kids throughout the U.S. that have contacted us. Um, they'll private message us, or they'll write on one of the postings I put, um, thanking us. Actually, 
the Pickering demonstration that we had done, I was at a different um, event here in Lynn with our table, and I had two of the kids come up to me and ask me, oh, I was at your presentation uh, at Pickering. Do you remember me? And I'm like, <laughs> well, they were sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. I'm sorry, but thank you for coming. And, and we've actually on uh, Facebook and um, e our email as well have gotten replies back from the parents talking about how our children came home and talked about for days on end. Not, they didn't go home and say, oh, how was your day? Oh, sorry. You know, no, they were like, there was this presentation today about this girl who died by suicide, and it really affected me. And they had that table talk, and that's what's important, mm -hmm. is to have that table talk. Like Missy was saying about how um, um, teenagers are going through their changes, and how one day they may be into cheerleading, but the next day they're not. Yes, it doesn't mean they're suicidal, but have that table talk with them. Just talk to them, sit down, have that dinner conversation, and that's what's really important, and find out. I, I actually, I visited the Facebook page. I've um, you know looked up before uh, when I first met you to find out more information, and one of the things that I thought was interesting that um, was on the Facebook, one of the postings that was from the AACAP, which is the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychology, said that it is good to talk to the teenagers about what's going on and um, how they're feeling, and that if you think that they um, may be contemplating self-harm in any way, uh, that you can ask them directly and compassionately, you know, what's going on. Um, and if they are, and ask if they're thinking of those things. So even it's it's conversation. I think that's important for everyone to have. But even at the most maybe serious stage, where you as a parent may be afraid, or as an aunt may be afraid that this is going on, they said it's not putting it in their head. It said rather than putting thoughts in the child's head, such a question will such a question will mm -hmm. provide assurances that somebody cares, mm -hmm. and that will give the young person a chance to talk about whatever's going on because if they're keeping it all inside, they're making all these decisions like alone yeah, when exactly. they don't have to. And, um, and it's not necessarily the case for that own teen. It could be their best friend or their cousin or their own sibling. That they think they see it. They in. could see. Um, and I've come across some other kids where they've lost a friendship because they did do the right thing. They went and told their parents and that parent talked to either their parent or went to the guidance counselor. And I've said, is it worth losing the friendship? It yes. Is. yes. Because maybe in 10 years from now, that person's gonna come back to you and thank you. It is worth it. But it's better than never knowing that and seeing that person down the street again. And, and I've had that occasion happen a few times, so. Yes. I think it's huge. Yeah. As you had said about the guilt, if somebody is thinking their friend or sibling or whoever they're in touch with is suicidal and they didn't do anything about it and something happens, they're going to have that guilt. I've, Even I've not. worked with that with, with many of Haley's friends. They've felt that they didn't know what to do and that's what we're trying to do is empower these, these kids. And we've made an impact. We've helped over 30 teens in nine states. We've made connections in Ireland, Australia, the United Kingdom, Japan. That's amazing. I mean, Canada. It, <laughs> Canada. It's amazing oh, I Canada. <laughs> what's happened. Um, it's amazing what's happened in the wake of the tragedy with your niece, with your daughter, with your granddaughter, because she obviously touched a lot of people's lives, but now through your grief you are touching the lives of so many and I think it, you should be commended that you're looking out for other families. Um, it's, it's emotional. It, it is emotional. Um, I know you had something you wanted to say. I saw that oh. you did. So I, no, that's, I was just going to interject that um, as parents are having talks with their children and we keep on using the, the term teen, um, it's trickling down into younger ages now. So the conversations need to start at a much younger age, maybe not as in depth and as graphic, et cetera. However, there are new reports that are um, coming out from uh, the CDC that um, children as young as five to eight 
are dying by suicide. And um, in fact, um, I work in the Lynn schools and a principal of an elementary school approached me and said, once he had heard we had spoken at Pickering, we're doing a huge shout out for them because they've broken the ice for <laughs> us. Um, but uh, this principal asked, when are you gonna come speak at our school? And at the time I was quite frankly shocked right. at elementary school. And then like literally the next day we got the newest report from the CDC that um, it's trickling down into younger ages. So that's really important to note. I did see that. I did see that. And I saw also that the, um, for I believe the same report for your youth, for, for teens, it's the third mm -hmm. largest way that adolescents lose their lives is suicide. Yes. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. Um, you know, I was, I, have a clip later on that we can play where you were talking at your fundraiser, uh, but you know you talked about the number of mm -hmm. of young people out there. I I think when you're looking at all the uh, different factors that we've talked about, there are certain aspects like bullying where things have gotten more complicated now with social media, with cell phones, with just different sort of like the onslaught of all these things coming at kids and I think that that you know is an example of one aspect that can be a part of what's going on that has gotten sort of um, blown to be a larger size. The other stuff though uh, family issues or or parents busy working all these different things when you are looking at these different dynamics the fact that it's younger kids there's there has to be a reason why this is happening um, it, even if it's a collective list of reasons, if there's a lot of depression or a lot of struggle mm -hmm. going on, there has to be a lot going on. And those are some of the things that I think are why people need to know because there's not an increase in this for no reason. There, there have to be a lot of things happening mm -hmm. right now that affect why it's this is happening. Undiagnosed mental illnesses, and it's harder to diagnose those in younger children. And that's why, and, and you hear it on the commercials all the time, how a lot of mental illnesses and such are increasing in it, uh, it, the cases of ADHD, autism, those are all increasing and they're attributing it to different factors in our own environments now. But it's going to take years and years to be able to filter those, those um, causes out to be able to get back to the way things were. And then to know, you know how to treat those things. I, you, how many times do you hear that something that works for adults, like as far as a medicine or yeah. something, they say can actually increase mm -hmm. um, depression or thoughts of suicide in someone younger? Right. So now they're having to figure out, well, what can we do for these young people? But the biggest thing you can always do, of course, is the communication, which mm -hmm. is why what you're doing is great. And I was just going to go on about mental illness. I just read um, a, a quick um, thing, and one medical thing was. 90% of suicides are a mental health issue. Um, not in all cases, um, but they're under um, Survivors of Hope, they actually have a doctor that is doing a research that actually they may be able to do blood work even and because there is a chemical in mm -hmm. a person that is able to do that. So, okay. yeah. so, find so out it's more. pretty interesting all the research they are doing. We have to go to a quick break, and when we come back, I am very much um, looking forward, but also getting the tissues ready, because I'm <laughs> going to ask Tally to talk to us about Haley, who inspired all of this wonderful work that's being done um, in her memory. We'll be right back. of millions of breeding dogs in puppy mills who supply puppies to pet stores. You can help too by not adding to the demand for pet store puppies. When searching for your next best friend, do what I did. Adopt. Don't shop. <laughs> Let a shelter dog like Johnny steal your heart.
ugly, don't be walking that way. Get me. Hi everyone, welcome back to today's Linkam TV show. We are speaking about a very serious issue, teen suicide, and joining me are the wonderful women from Haley's Hope Foundation, which was founded in memory of Haley Blowers, um, Lorraine's daughter, and these lovely ladies are Haley's aunts and grandmother. So thank you so much again for being here. Uh, we've been talking about the alarming statistics, including the fact that it is getting younger, mm -hmm. the um, ages that they're seeing uh, where young people are committing suicide. And we were talking about how there's a lot of different factors that go into that because clearly um, there are a lot of things going on in the world. And obviously with the increase of young people doing this, there has to be, you know, um, we have to take notice. And I, I know we've talked also about how a lot of it is mental health related and that that can be hard to to find out what's mm -hmm. going on with the child or especially an adolescent because those are tough years anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and they may not talk about what's really going on inside and so you have to reach out to them. When we talk about Haley, we talk about how she was always helping other people. And I um, know that you're here, Tally, and you're her grandmother. And I want people to have a little sense about Haley growing up, what she was like to be around from the family perspective. Um, I know we have some pictures of her um, when she was a little girl, and if you could tell us a little bit about what she was like as a kid. She was a sweet little girl. She came home from the hospital and lived with us for three and a half years. And I did a lot of the raising because when her mother went back to work, I was with her. And you have to stop and think. She's not your child, and you can only do so much. That it's up to her mother mm -hmm. to do a lot of it. But it's hard when she's with you. Her and my husband were very, very close, and everybody knows that. And she was with us until she moved to Maine, and she was what eight. Eight. She was eight when she moved to Maine. And of course, my husband took it very, very hard. He wasn't going to see it because at the time he was teaching a pickering. And she went to Sisson. And when she got out of school, she went over to his classroom. So we still had her. And during vacations, she was like any other child, got into trouble. <laughs> but she was a sweet little girl. I know we've talked about one of the things that happens when someone um, commits suicide is that people sometimes feel guilty and we've been highlighting and reiterating that that no one should feel that it's well you could have you could have um, you know saved the person or you, you know it's your fault. I do think we we're learning how people can look for signs, mm -hmm. like you said, and what they can try to do, but I think that it must be very difficult for a mother, for aunts, for friends, for grandparents, um, because clearly the way she treated other people, you all did a great job raising her. I mean, that's the thing that I get is that, you know, you're a wonderful family and you did raise her well and she did do a lot for others, but the internal things that might have been hurting her. Um, are not things that anybody caused, and they're not things that are easy to take away from a person when they feel that. Um, I mean, do you think that, that that's fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I know I know that there are things that can be looked to. I I wanted to mention that when we were just showing the pictures of her, um, if we see the ones with her as a little girl again, um, one of them is with her grandfather that was the teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can tell she was a happy little kid. I mean, that's what I get from the pictures. Um, the balloons I see there, and one of them has her name on it, and those are released in her memory. Is that yes. right? Yes, yes. Um, 
we all needed in the beginning a tangible way of sending messages up to heaven and um, balloon re releases are becoming more and more popular for so many things and so for us it was a natural fit that pink balloons um, on the first month anniversary was appropriate mm -hmm. and then we've done it yearly ever since um, some people feel they need to do it on her birthday or a special momentous occasion you know whatever's personal to them but it's very healing um, because you're able to get out the words of how much you miss not just Haley but any loss how much you miss this person um, and physically sending a message up to heaven I mean the balloon rises and disappears mm -hmm. and in yourself you process it as you were able to do that and it's also releasing your feelings and your thoughts and it's kind of cleansing so for Haley of course it's important to us to remember her and do this um, which we do and uh, we the schools that um, she had attended especially the school up in Maine um, are extremely supportive and go full force with this and we've received testimonies even from strangers who have witnessed these balloon releases going on and have then inquired the background story and it's impacted them um, so survivorship that's what all of this is about is survivorship which is a whole other topic of conversation and that's something else that we do also cater to um, because it's it is a loss and there are more questions than answers um, and that feeling of guilt and and so on so we find it very important to also address these um, the uh, American Federation of Suicide Prevention has a um, has a poster um, that says every 40 seconds someone dies by suicide every 41 seconds someone is left behind to pick up the pieces and that's what people tend to forget about and um, that's more my stream of um, participation within the foundation is um, the survivors and uh, in fact we are um, it's a national day of survivor um, uh, healing in, in November. November. Yes, uh, this year it's on Saturday, November 23rd. And um, last year was the first time we had hosted, been a host site. Uh, it is nationwide, um, several locations. So anybody that's interested or needs to research it more, um, we'll have more information about it on our website. Um, we are planning on doing it this year. We just don't have a site yet, so I don't want to elaborate too much on it, but it, um, our website information will follow this broadcast and they can continually check it for more updates. Okay. And did you want to say something, Randy? I didn't know if you were... <laughs> well, um, as Leslie had said, we've received testimonies from when they did her year anniversary at her high school in Maine. We received a testimony that she, she cited, but I was thinking of the day of the memorial service they had up in Maine two weeks after her death. Mm -hmm. And there were over 400 pink balloons released. And I remember one of the women I worked with came to the memorial service and when she got home, her husband said to her that he had gone out to do an errand and when he came back, he had to pull the car over and stop and he wept because he saw all those balloons. And he knew, he, he'd met Haley briefly, but his wife Donna knew her better. But he, he pulled over and was just moved by it all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that the way you discuss the survivorship, because I had said, am I accurately explaining? And you said, you looked like you said more or less, but I, I don't want to get it wrong. But just knowing that, that that kind of guilt, there are things that people can look for, but I feel like there are where people are doing that playing back in their mind. Mm -hmm. And you can really beat yourself up with that. I feel that's like that's normal. A, that's a normal process. Mm -hmm. And it's because as humans, we like to have a beginning and an end. With suicide, there isn't. It's we can't close that's <clears throat> excuse me we can't close that circle 
and we are constantly trying to do that. Once, once we understand and accept that it was that person's decision and we did the best we could with what we had and living by that, and that's really hard as her mother. I've struggled with it, <laughs> and I've thought of, I should have listened better, I should have tried this, I should have looked, but I didn't know. I hadn't been educated. It's also and a sense of abandonment. Why did this person choose to leave me? Yeah. We keep on saying suicide is a choice, and it is. Um, so now this, the survivors are thinking, why did this person choose to leave me? And what's wrong with me? And that starts a whole cycle mm -hmm. of questioning. Um, what made you, after you lost Haley, um, I know she's up there, but when you lost Haley, what made you want to do the outreach? Because I'm sure that while it's a great thing, it must have been a very difficult thing in some ways. We've always, as a family, have always been wanting to help others. We got that instilled from our father, who, mm -hmm. was, who, who loved to do community projects, mm -hmm. and Haley loved helping people. And I couldn't see another person going through this, and I have a very strong faith in God. And I told him the night she died, I looked up at him and said, I'm glad you think I can handle this, because I never thought I could. And I said, I'll make a deal with you. You deal with my grief and I'll do what you want. And this is what door opened up, is helping others and educating so no one else has to go through this. I hate the price I had to pay to help others. I wish that I could have still had Haley and still done this, but that's not how it worked. And Haley would be so happy helping so many people. And she told many of her friends, the, these children told me, or these teens told me, that they would talk suicide with Haley and she'd get mad at them and say, don't you dare. If you do, I'll come after you in death and you'll get in trouble. <laughs> and they're like, how could she do it if she told me not to? And, they, and it's because Haley felt her friend was worth living and that she wasn't. But the name Haley means hero and she has become a hero to many. And it, I'm proud and honored that I got to be her mother. I think that that says a whole lot about Haley that she told them you better not. Oh yeah, um, she'd go right after them. <laughs> I could see her doing it too. <laughs> but yet, um, it's the, the part where you mentioned that she didn't feel like she deserved it, mm -hmm. I think that, that that right there is what I, I feel like um, needs to be um, attention brought to for every young person. And I think that that's because there are people who, no matter how much you think that they're beautiful or wonderful or lovable, um, if they don't feel that way about themselves, it is very difficult because I've known people that you try to almost basically convince them that they are, but they have to find a way to love themselves. And I feel like your website, your Facebook page, Kristen, I'm sorry, I know, <laughs> your Facebook page is an example where, you know, you're always putting up affirmations, I noticed, about like, uh, love yourself the way that you are, you know, um, be you. I, um, I have a thing in my house that just came to mind, a little sign that says, um, be yourself because no one else can be. I mean, there's, there's so many mm -hmm. things you want the kids in your life, especially to know about themselves. I have nieces and nephews and, um, hope to be your mom someday. And I think that you, when you look at kids, you want every kid, you're a teacher, every kid you see, you want them to feel good about mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but it can be difficult yeah. to really get that. Yeah, well, I have a knack them. with teens. I always have, Haley's friends have always loved me. And of course that drove her nuts because it's like, my mom's not cool, that's my mom. <laughs> no, no. But they all liked me. And I also did youth group, uh, helped um, co-lead or assisted in some ways and the um, the teens will listen to me and and I've always felt myself to be different I, I didn't like to follow the norms um, in high school I did things different than others and I didn't care I, it isn't that I wanted to stand out I just didn't want to be the same so because I felt comfortable with that I'm able to explain that it's okay and every time we speak to a group or an individual teenager, 
the end of our conversation, it's always, you are valuable, you are important, you are loved. And if, if only by just me and God, you are loved. Mm -hmm. And they can feel that and that gives them that hope. And I get calls the next day, I felt so much better after you said that. I am important. It's like, yes, you are. And it's like, so what if you're not important to that person over there? Who cares? You're important to that one. You're important to me. Yeah. And that should be enough. I think that's an, that's an amazing, that's an amazing thing. I, I also, you know, talking about her friends coming to you and I know talking about young people, um, if they think that their friend might be struggling. Um, when I was looking up about Haley and um, trying to find out even more about her than I had already heard, um, I came across a story that um, was actually uh, written recently, I believe, and it was about a couple of middle school girls in New York City that go to the public schools. And one of them, um, who was 12, um, helped the other who was 11 basically by going and saying to the principal like at the school that she was at or to someone that was an adult that they were concerned about her and then the conversation started and the 11 year old girl um, who was feeling down about herself um, who had been depressed and contemplating certain things like she was she hadn't necessarily thought about suicide but she had hurt herself mm -hmm. she had been cutting herself and her friend went and spoke up and they did something and now they're both here and the 11 year old has said like thanks to my 12 year old friend I'm here because she said something mm -hmm. um, and now she's not looking to um, to hurt herself anymore and I feel like you know having someone who would open the door like um, the little girl, you know, here's this little girl that her friend's not even at the same school as her anymore, but still went to the people there to it say, just takes one. you mm -hmm. need to do something, please. My friend, I think might, and I don't know. And well, then she, that's a lucky case because I am hearing more and more from teens that the schools aren't doing anything. And I feel it's because the schools are uneducated. They don't know what to do. And they're so overwhelmed with what they have to cover with education that they're just at a loss and that's why we offer to come to schools I think that free of oh. charge yeah even no we, which is we amazing, don't charge yeah. because the message is more important which is amazing that you do that and that's why um, having the support for your foundation is something I really want people to uh, know about is showing the support when they have events and when we when they do things because you're doing all these things um, of your own volition, of your own time, um, out of the goodness of your hearts, and because of what you've been through, but you're not charging for it, and you're not making people feel any sense of like, well, you're not doing this right. You're saying, hey, let me come in and help. And I think, you know, with the schools, I do feel like with the bullying aspect, that that is something that, you know, could be a show for another day, but that definitely, mm -hmm. I don't feel like schools, some schools, um, step up as much as they should when there's things happening in their own building during the day. Um, but with the fact that she went to the head of the school to say, mm -hmm. I'm concerned, and then that person talked to the parents, and then the parents talked to the girl, that's a really wonderful thing because you're right, sometimes people don't know what to do and they don't do anything. Um, and one thing we, we try to tell the kids is if the first person you talk to doesn't do anything, she got lucky and maybe got the person who, the, the right person on the first try. Go to another one. Keep going. Be polite about it, of course. Don't have an attitude, but keep going and you, until you find the right person. I mean, you do that with your hairdresser, your doctor, your mechanic. You might have to do that for, for help for others or yourself, but don't be afraid. And this also really um, quickly from this story, because we have to go to another break, I just wanted to say that the... Um, the little girl, they had had a friend, I forgot about this, they had had a, a friend who had committed suicide not that long before. So I think for this little girl who was struggling, mm -hmm. that was also mm -hmm, in her yeah. mind. And we talked That's about that. That's a risk factor. Yes. And, and I just, the quote that the little girl who was uh, hurting herself said, she saved my life. Because of her, I got the help I needed. I didn't have that before. So mm -hmm. not realizing that there were people who could help mm -hmm. them. And now they were coming to her saying, do you need our help? So extremely moving um, and it's such an important issue. We'll be right back after this break. Stealing my things? I would have to raise my voice if you just give it back and stop being like a criminal. I 
don't have your cell phone. Oh, God, I don't have look your cell at yourself. Phone. What are you offering? Is this a thief's huh? uniform? Oh, you see oh, all these people standing around here? Oh, Why am oh, I the one? I, I'm Why sorry, homie. Okay. Oh. What? Don't make this a big deal. Just give it back, okay? Did you see me? Did yeah, you, you know, I just know you took it. Where are your witnesses? Look at Where are your witnesses? Did you see me? Did you see me? You left us in the bathroom. Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Linkam TV show. We've been talking about Haley's Hope Foundation in memory of Haley Blowers. And Haley was 16 yes. when she committed suicide. Um, such a young, tough age. We've just been talking a little bit uh, off camera about you know, the things you go through as an adolescent. And I, I know bullying has become a factor that's sort of increased as we've mentioned. Um, with all the different ways that it can be there, but also those same things can be a powerful tool like Facebook has been for the foundation to reach a lot of young people all over the country and mm -hmm. the world. Can you talk a little bit, because you have an event coming up, and this is something that um, there's tears, but there's also some laughter and happy memories, and I feel like people coming together to make a change in October. Um, um. So we have a fundraiser. We're a nonprofit, but the reason why we do have fundraisers is we give away scholarships to the different high schools that Haley had attended. One goes to Lynn Tech um, to graduate in senior, and a, a couple others go up to the high schools up in Maine that she had attended. But um, Haley was always giving stuff to her friends and helping them out. Um, actually, uh, Missy had told me about a week before Haley had died that there was this one particular girl and she didn't have anything for lunch. And Haley d got up, wasn't gonna let this girl not have lunch, and took a, um, a couple of dollars from all of their friends and gave it to the girl to go buy lunch. That's how Haley was. So we wanna give and continue giving back to her peers. And that's how she was in that's how we want to continue her memory. So in October is our major fundraiser. It's on Friday, October 18th at the Knights of Columbus. Oh, this is our third annual um, fundraiser. It's from 7 to 11, and um, it's $15 for a single ticket, $25 for a couple, $5 for students, and children five and under are free. And we have a DJ that plays, we have Missy that speaks, <laughs> uh, and we have a ton of silent auction items, um, raffle items, ranging from $25 up to $800, depending on your pick a choice and what you like. Uh, last year there was a bidding war on this hot iron between these little teeny um, bobbers that <laughs> <laughs> they were going back and forth to the very last minute of the silent auction ending. And so it, it, it's a lot of fun and a great time to get together with our community. And that's what it's about, too, is having fun with everybody and getting to know them. We um, we actually, um, oh, sorry. Oh, Lisa, and, like, oh, no, I just wanted to, and also uh, the food will be provided by Texas Roadhouse. Oh, wow. Which Haley really enjoyed as well. I know, I know when I went last year to the event, it was a great event, and my hope from everybody at home watching uh, this is that please, if you can attend, attend. If you can tell people about it, tell people about it. And if you can't go, but you want to still you know, pay the price of a ticket to donate to the foundation or, or get in touch with them to give something, to be raffled, it's such an important thing. Like, everyone knows someone who is affected by this, whether we realize it or not, because the numbers alone make that clear. Um, I've been affected 
by it because of knowing about Haley. And then also, you know, I do see a lot of things with different youth in my life that they struggle with, and they struggle with some very difficult things. A lot of families hide it uh, between being ashamed or traditional topics of society that are allowed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of mothers are, everybody, but mostly mothers have come up to me and, and admired. They've come to me with tears saying, I wish I could have done that when my teen was struggling or before my teen died. And you're out there, but people who've known me my whole life, people I grew up here with in Lynn, they'll tell you I, I don't take no very easily. And I don't like to shut up about something important. And this is important. I don't care if it's acceptable or not. I'll, I'll say it in a way that's polite, of course. But this is too important. We need our youth and they need to know that they're important and that they're loved and that there is help. And even for those adults who are listening and struggling, there is help for them. And there are people who care whether you realize it or not. People live their own little worlds all the time. I had mentioned I'm always in my own little world, but I do incorporate the rest of the world around me too. But people think that because other people are busy, they don't want to take the time. It's like They do, you just got to ask. And that's hard to do. I think that, yeah, the asking is a huge it's part. It's very hard. And I think it's great that that you're the kind of person you are and that you all are the kind of people you are because even though you doing this came out of something tragic that you went through. I do feel like uh, not everyone, like you said, could do this. So you have a gift with people that you all share that all obviously started with your parents and then was passed on and then passed on to the other generation. Yeah, we so got good our job. compassion from mom <laughs> and our ability yeah. to affect the community from our dad because being a teacher and knowing a lot of people in his community work, they taught us very well to do to do for others. Definitely. And and it makes it that much more bittersweet when I hear about how Haley was and when I see how you are mm -hmm. to know that you've had to go through this and that she was also going through things. But uh, it's, it's great that you're there for the community. So people who can show their support in any way, please do. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to actually go to a, a clip in a moment um, from last year's mm -hmm. when I was there. And um, I know it was when you were speaking um, to the crowd about some of the facts, and uh, we can we can take a look at that clip, and then um, you know when I start talking, we'll come back to this. But I just wanted people to get a little snippet of it um, to see what was going on. The fact that you speak and that there, you know, um, you really had all of it um, ironed out, all the details to do such a great event. So we're going to take a look at that clip, and. Uh, hear Rainey speaking, or Missy, <laughs> also known as. 12 and 17 were at risk in suicide in the past year. Three million teenagers, that is a huge number. 80% of all suicides could have been prevented. That's one, um, excuse me, that is four out of every five. To, teenagers that have died by suicide could have been prevented. And all it takes is talking to them and watching them. The hard part of watching the teens and seeing what it is, one, teens, we all know, they're all, all drama. Everything's chaos, everything's a problem. But if you listen through that to hear what else they're saying, are they just venting or is something really, really bothering them? Am I having feedback? Oh, okay. And the other scary thing is that uh, signs of suicide are mimic drug abuse and a lot of people will look at it as the teenager is is struggling with drug use many are but not all suicidal teens are are drug abusers many will dabble in it um, just trying to find relief from their life I'm sorry that it was shaky at the end there I um I thought we would come back before that, but I, I was, there was one little girl, I have to say this because it was funny, she was very into the whole camera thing. So I remember she was around uh, and she was asking questions and stuff and I could hear her little voice just now, but um, it was cute that you know, she was into it. But everybody there was very uh, warm and one of the things that I wanted to play the clip for is at the beginning of it, I know you couldn't hear it then, but um, you mentioned three million, I believe, is the number of, nope, or not, not three million. Um, 38,000. 38,000. 
I, I, and that at that statistic that I had had, I believe I said thirty-three thousand. And that was. But from now, yeah, and now we have updated statistics that it's thirty-eight thousand people per year in the United States die by suicide, and people don't hear about it. it they don't hear. They hear about murders, and there's only about sixteen thousand murders per year. But you hear about those, and mm -hmm. and it's it's more than double that. And those are only the reported ones. And I think that I was thinking of the wrong number because I was—I think we, there was something about um, dealing with adolescents. But basically, um, the number of adolescents that have been, even if they've just contemplated it, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. gone through with it, there's even more when yes. you factor them in. Yeah, there's absolutely. something to help give people a visual when I'm speaking um, that. You know, you hear all these big numbers, and it's like, wow, impressive um, and frightening. But um, the average statistic is um, one in five young adults will attempt suicide. So then of those one in five, one in three will succeed. So if you break it down, just given those small numbers, you break it down and put it in your average classroom of 30 students, six of those students will no longer be um, sitting in their seats. It's, and yeah. it's able to give you a better visual. Mm -hmm. um, I think. Can you add to that? Um, some of the things that we've talked about for the events with the balloon release, um, the October event, in November, the Survivorship Day. Um, coming up is the um, Suicide Awareness Day and week within September. We have that up. I think it's an important time. It's always an important thing to, to talk about and have people know about, but I think it's important for people to really, on these days, um, to stop and think about what's going on and how you might be able to brighten up someone's day or, or help someone in need. Um, with just talking and the emotional part of things, you know, how can you help them perhaps to get the help they need? Um, and also there's a walk. American Foundation of Suicide has their Prevention Out of Darkness walk, which is, um, I believe, a candlelit type no. thing. No, is it not? It's during it's, the day. Oh, it's during um, the day. Okay. Oh, yes, it is. So nice. Well, this. So this one is in September as well, which will be um, at the end of the month. Um, in Wakefield, and that's a three to five mile walk. So there are things going on in. Like you were talking about candlelight um, vigil that can be done on World um, Suicide Prevention Day, which is Tuesday, September 10th. Okay. And that's typically the day that a lot of people will put a candle in their window um, for safety reasons. I, I personally buy the, the, fake. the LED yeah. fake light yeah. and put yeah. that in my window. Um, so those are available and um, that's when a good day to remember. So I just wanted to give people an opportunity as we wrap up to recognize the websites that they can go to, which is haleyshopefoundation.org. And then also I wanted to mention Pink Carnation Day Yes, Pink Carnation Day occurs every May 3rd, um, which happens to also be Haley's birthday. Um, it is a day of um, more of the lighter side of things and um, positive messaging, uh, uh, paying it forward and random acts of kindness as type of things. Um, schools, businesses, uh, all sorts of organizations, people, churches, synagogues can all participate. Information is always up on our website. We have um, testimonies and um, and pictures from previous years. And of course, as always, with any questions, they can find us somehow and um, to get more information. In fact, the interns here today go to Lynn Tech and remember and said that Pink Carnation Day is one of the most popular days at the school. So that's amazing. She went there as a freshman, and it's yeah. and still the impact. Now her legacy continues. Yep. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, you have the Facebook page and these resources. Um, right. On our website, um, there's many different tabs about warning signs and everything like that, but one of them is the resource um, 
tab that does have information, whether it be a, a, a hotline that you can call or an online support group and stuff like that. And not all hotlines are just for those that are in distress. It also can help those that um, have a friend or a family member for them to help with their questions or Which concerns. Is great to know and it's for all ages because this affects everyone. Thank you Tally for relaying um, to us about uh, Haley as a little girl. She was such a cute little girl, um, beautiful teenager, loved animals, people and she's clearly got to be uh, an angel now. So thank you very much for tuning in and thank you so much for being here. We look forward to having them here again sometime and please go to their fundraisers and their pages and help out. Thank you. Thank you.